Do we have plastics inside our brains right now? And if we do, what are they doing to us? I have been consumed by this question ever since I found out about Team C's. Let me back up and tell you what happened. A few weeks ago, I got a link to this video. Two years ago, we raised $20 million to plant 20 million trees. That's right. Literally hundreds Impressive. of us influencers came together and made videos about the environment to raise money for Team Trees. And even though it's been two entire years because of those videos, 2,600 trees are being planted every single day with TeamTrees.org. But recently, as you can tell by where I'm standing, more and more people have wanted us to do something for the ocean, which is why we're following up Team Trees with Team C's. And we need your help to get 30 million pounds of plastic and trash out of the freaking ocean. Plastic, that's a lot of plastic. <laughs> I watched this video and I kept thinking like, all right, there are gonna be a lot of videos, a lot of people that are dissecting this problem based on like their own expertise and what's, what's my expertise, psychology, mental health, like all that crap, all those plastics in the ocean is there any connection they have floating around out there to our mental health? And then could their way make their way into our brain? And uh, this, this is what I've learned. I've always known there's a connection between plastics and a danger to sea life. When I was a little kid, I remember seeing this commercial about how if you throw big pieces of plastic away in the trash, it ends up in the ocean and then fish get stuck in it. So make sure you cut up those plastics into little pieces. And now I know that that was probably like a really bad thing I did. Cause here's what happens. You get this water bottle. You enjoy it for 20 minutes and then you get rid of it. Some of that plastic is going to end up in a landfill. Some of it maybe is recyclable, I don't know. Most plastics I'm learning, many of them are not recyclable. But in some parts of the world, you don't really have the best landfills and those plastics end up in some type of water source or stream or river or something like that and end up flowing to the ocean. It's kind of indestructible. This piece of plastic is going to outlive you and me. What does happen though, while it doesn't decompose, it doesn't break down and disappear, it does break down into smaller bits. And when something like this becomes something like this, it becomes microplastic. And microplastics, well, they get everywhere and they're really, really, really hard to remove. But plastic bottles are the easy example. Everyone knows these are made out of plastic. What I've learned in making this video is plastics are in so many other things that we don't even realize. Did you know a lot of tea bags have plastic in them to make them a bit more resilient against hot water? Face wash has micro beads in it, which are very, very, very small microplastic and while that aids in the exfoliation process when you wash it away all those plastics are going down the drain a lot of food containers have plastic in them like this juice box probably has plastic inside to keep the juice from wearing away on the, the cardboard there. And a lot of the plastic here can also leach away and wind its way into the food, just like in water bottles. I didn't even say the one that surprised me the most is this. There are plastics in a lot of clothing, especially synthetic fibers. Um, this is one of my favorite winter jackets and uh, it's got plastic in it. There are a lot of different ways plastics can get inside of us. It can get on our skin, but most scientists don't seem to be too worried about that. But the other things that people are very worried about are all the plastics we're eating, all the plastics we're drinking, and what really shocked me is all the plastics we're breathing in. Apparently, it's pretty easy for microplastics to get around us kind of like dust and then for us to breathe that in. How much of this stuff is getting inside of us? We don't really know. 
Some people have said we eat about a credit card size of plastic every week, but I've also seen scientists say about a credit card size of plastic a year. Plastics have been identified inside of us. They've been in, identified in our poop. But what really concerned me is a recent study that found plastic inside placentas. Yes, placenta, that superstructure, amazing life-giving force that helps fetuses get their nutrients from mothers in the womb. And what was even more concerning is those plastics still had trace elements of paints and other chemicals. And we don't really know how common this is, how much plastic gets inside there, and how this might be affecting that developing fetus. This gets us back to that main question I've been obsessed with. Are there plastics inside our heads right now? I don't know, but it seems like there could be. Well, the good news is we have this thing called the blood-brain barrier, and its main job is to keep all the junk out and let the good stuff in. This protects us most of the time. But what I learned is there are plastics that are smaller than microplastics. They're called nanoplastics. And these plastics can get through the blood-brain barrier. They have been found in the brains of fish. We also know there's another way to get through the blood brain barrier. It's like the secret passageway, and that's through your nose. Sometimes things that get through your nose, they don't go into your respiratory system and work their way into your lungs. They can actually get into your brain. Um, the way smell is processed, it's it's sort of right above, uh, right above your nose, inside a little bit. The olfactory bulb, old factory. So that's how I remember smells. Olfactory smell bad. That's a psychology tangent. Anyways, it could be that you inhale plastics through your nose, through the air that we breathe, and it can get into our brain that way as well. So what does this mean for our mental health? What does it mean for our physical health? We kind of don't know. There's been a lot of research on animals who have had exposure to plastics inside their bodies, but the problem with that research is these animals get exposure to high amounts of plastics in a short period of time. And for humans, our exposure is probably a little bit of plastic over a very long period of time. So the research might not be comparable. But if we extrapolate on the research that has been done on animals and also the research on other toxins that eventually can reach our brains, the news isn't that great. With a toxic level of concentration, again, we don't know what that means for plastics, but if you get enough that it's toxic, it can trigger something called oxidative stress. This is one of the same problems that happens from chronic smoking or high exposure to UV radiation, other type of pollutant exposure, and it can make you more vulnerable to problems like neurodegenerative diseases such as Parkinson's, Huntington's, and Alzheimer's. I definitely have learned a thing or two about plastics, and the first thing I've learned is don't touch bottled water. Get yourself a nice bottle like this, a nice metal one, a reusable one. Yeah, this costs more. Yeah, you have to use tap water, but you're going to be doing so much more good for you. It's going to be saving you money. And something like this will last you years to come. In fact, it's probably a good idea for you to make sure your food doesn't touch a lot of plastic containers. If you get strawberries from the grocery store, take them out of that plastic, put them in something else. Uh, put them in glass, put that in the fridge. And when you get takeout, remember most of your takeout, even if it looks like it's packaged in some kind of paper or cardboard, it's probably lined with plastic. Don't store it in that. Put it in a plate, eat it out of the plate. Make sure your most of your food is not touching these plastic containers. And then, if you do have food in a plastic container, don't microwave it. <laughs> Every time you microwave it, you're way increasing the chances 
of plastics from that container getting into the food that you are microwaving. Plastics are unavoidable though, They're, and they have a lot of good uses. So if you are gonna buy plastics, buy good quality plastics that are probably gonna last a lot longer. And the last thing you can do is make sure wherever you go, you pack in and pack out. Whatever stuff you bring with you, you take it out with you as well. You go on a hike, make sure you take all the waste back with you. It makes a big difference. You might actually be saving the life of animals or you might be saving that plastic from getting back into the ecosystem and working its way back into us. Thank you, Mr. Beast, for introducing me to Team Seas. There's so much I've learned from the last few weeks and as depressing as it's been, I also feel energized and activated and I know much more about what I can do. And I want you to check out all the other Team Seas videos that are premiering right now and in the weeks to come. There's a lot of good stuff on its way, so check out those videos and go to teamseas.org to learn more about this campaign. And if you'd like to learn more about mental health and psychology, be sure to subscribe to The Psych Show.